Hi guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on my latest video. Uh, if you didn't watch it, um, I released an intro for Panix for his content contest entry. And if you can see, this is the kind of effect that people are asking how to do. I said I'd release a tutorial at 50 likes, and I reached that today, so I thought I'd introduce a tutorial for you all. Now this is mainly done in After Effects, but you, I did have to bring in an object from Cinema 4D first. And all that is, is it can be whatever you like. Um, I used a logo, which was his logo, but I'm going to show you with um, a text object here. So I just inserted a text object, uh, center it, uh, make all the depth you want. Uh, the caps that you like as well. This can be whatever. Um, but the important thing was on the type down here to make it quadrangles and a regular grid. So if you look, it's now a regular grid all along. And just change the width down a bit so there are a few more. And also in the subdivisions of the depth, just turn that up a bit as well and don't make it too high oh, I think I've made a bit too many here so just change it until it looks like quite evenly spaced, quite nice uh, maybe even get rid of the caps in total uh, just so you have a normal blank shape like this and this is going to be your standard shape so next what you want to do is press C uh, to make it editable then right click select children, make it editable again, select children and connect and delete. And now you have one single object which has all your divisions in. The next thing you want to do is go to file, export and then wavefront which is a .obg file and save it wherever. I'll just save it to the desktop as uh, tutorial and just keep the scale at 1 and that's all you need to do in Cinema 4D so now jump into After Effects I'm using CS6 but you can use whatever you like you do need a plugin called Plexus though uh, you can find it your own way or you can buy it if you like as well but what we want to do is make a new composition so go composition new and make this however long you want. I'll just make it 10 seconds for now. Um, you can make it 720, 1080, whatever you like. Then right click down here, new solid, doesn't matter what color it is. And then I'm just going to search for Plexus here, it's both Robite, and just drag it on and then go to add object, OBG, and then import. Go to where you saved it and import. And as you can see, we have our object here, which I will scale up. And also, I shall move it along. So it's in the center. Now, this is a really great program. Um, it basically connects all your objects together and kind of draws lines between them. This kind of effect can be achieved in Cinema 4D if you were to go to Atom Array and drag it in. Um, if you just make this a lot smaller. Um, as you can see here you can have all the objects connected together um, in this kind of really nice cool shape. Uh, this is how to do it in After Effects. Um, if you have the plugin called Plexus, it's really powerful. If you go down here, you can make the lines smaller, and so then you connect at a certain distance, or you can increase how many lines go between them if you want more lines connecting to each other. Uh, it's really, really powerful, but I'm just going to keep this at 25 and 10. You can also change the color of the lines. If you go to color here, I used a yellow. Um, 
something like this anyway. And the best thing about this now is because you imported that object, you can also rotate it around in 3D space as well. Um, and so you can have your object here. But the hard part is to actually um, rotate it around where you want. The best thing to do is actually change the anchor point in Cinema 4D because right now it's rotating around here but I can never be bothered to do that as I'm too lazy. So you can move this around wherever you like and keep it to however you like. I'm just going to have to increase the length here so they're more connected and I'm going to rotate it around until we're happy with it. Um, Alright, so I'll just rotate this around there and this will do for now. I'll just change the position. Right, so when you're happy with it and you've got all the lines that you want, you want to go to right click down here, new camera, and make this however, uh, whatever you like. I'm going to insert a 50mm camera, and then what you can do is go to the camera tool and track Z. And this will allow you to actually zoom in on your object and actually be able to rotate around in 3D space. Now the really good thing about this is if you go into your Plexus object, go to Depth of Field, Camera Settings, you can then actually introduce a Depth of Field within Cinema 4D. So go to Camera Options, turn on Depth of Field and you get this really nice depth of field here which if we drag back this is what can really increase your render time so you've got to get it right um, I'm not too sure how far this is in 3D space, this is going to take forever now uh, I wish I hadn't done that so I'll come back when that's... oh no, there we are. <laughs> okay, so obviously that's too near, so you might need to increase this a bit. And see, there we are, we have a really nice depth of field in the background. And if we increase the aperture to maybe 50 pixels, um, this basically just makes the background more blurry. And you can have it whatever you like. So maybe you want it as an octagon field here and it's just really powerful and so I just keyframed in a camera position as well um, so you can have it whatever you like and you just gotta make sure that your focus distance is in the foreground when you render this out as, and also you might need to actually change with the distance here um, to make sure you actually have something at least in the foreground in focus and you get this really nice um, depth of field in the background which you can play around with as much as you like you can have it as blurry or as unblurry as you like uh, it's something really powerful and this is what I found the best way to kind of play around in 3D space in, within um, After Effects so you might just want to change it up to however you like and you just get this really nice kind of natural depth of field without even touching Cinema 4D. Again this is all possible within Cinema 4D if you wanted to um, but this is just a different way to play around. Um, you might be able to get hold of Plexus a lot easier and get the hang of using it easier than you would in After Effects, sorry in Cinema. Um, I know I managed to learn this all um, kind of as I went along, I'd never really used a camera in After Effects before, but everything's kind of labelled for you really well, and it creates this really nice effect, which if you look in the intro here, just creates this really nice 
effect which looks really nice as well you can see you have a really nice blurred background really nice subtle kind of sharpness here and you can play around with the object in full 3D space as well it can get quite hard to kind of keyframe the object to move how you want it to but it's all about just patience and just going through your timeline making sure the movement seems smooth enough so I hope you've learned something from this uh, I'm not going to give away Plexus because it's a very expensive plugin but if you find it on your own then good for you uh, it's always nice to uh, give some money to the makers for making this incredible plugin so thanks for watching this and I'll see you soon remember to subscribe for more tutorials